Robert Morris coach Bernard Clark Jr. The team uh, back-to-back wins now after a 14-12 victory over Charleston Southern. They're going to wrap up the season. They're going to host Eastern Illinois this weekend. So, Coach, just first some general thoughts on your team, and we'll go to some questions. Yeah, I thought they fought hard, Cal. I thought they did a great job of playing the entire game. I mean, as you know, we lost our second-team quarterback. He has a concussion, so our third-team quarterback had to go in. I thought Zach went in and did a great job under the conditions he were in, able to score in the fourth quarter. And go ahead. I mean, it was a hard fought battle. You know, Charleston Southern is a, a worthy opponent and they have a good football team. They play extremely hard. You know, Coach Gabe does a great job of getting those guys prepared. We just happened to hang in there as long as we could. And, you know, special teams helped us out a little bit. So that was a positive thing about our team on Saturday. Um, let me ask you one more question about that game and then some other yeah. questions. In an ugly, an ugly game, 14 12, not a lot of scoring. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you manage that? Like, you know, where one play either way can make the difference if somebody breaks a long touchdown or something. But the biggest thing with us, because, you know, we had chicken and then Tyler started the game. So I just kept going to the defense and say, hey, guys, just give Tyler time to get this thing going. Just give him time to relax. Let's not get overwhelmed. Let's not get frustrated with no points. And basically just telling the offense, hey, we're going to get it going. And then when Tyler gets knocked out of the game, now you're talking to the offense in a different mode saying, hey, got to give Zach time. He's going to get into the rhythm of what's going on, telling the defense the same thing. And just telling the special teams, hey, let's make sure we keep good field position, make sure we keep positive field position. That's why it was one time I think we were fourth and two on like the plus 48, and the offense coordinator wanted to go for it. I'm like, no, nah, we're not going for it. We're going to try to work this field position thing until we can get some stuff going. So giving our guys um, the patience they needed and the understanding they need in order to keep it keep it close as we could in order to try to win the game at the end. It may be cliche next man up but like if Zach's the third string going into the season you know he doesn't know if he's going to play and now here he is making the big plays and scoring two touchdowns talk about just just being ready when he was called well the the great thing about Zach is last week because you know when chicken went down and then last week when Tyler was working I went up to Zach and said hey are you ready for this he said coach you keep forgetting I started three games last year and even though we didn't win a game he still played in three college games. So it's a situation where he was kind of like, I'm ready for it. You know, whatever happens, I'll be prepared, whatever the situation may be, whatever you guys need me to do. And so that was a positive thing about Zach. He's played in some games and some college games, so it wasn't his first rodeo. So that helped us out a little bit. A couple questions from uh, about EIU. Both you and EIU have enjoyed some turnaround seasons this year. For people who don't understand how challenging that can be, how can you explain what it takes, you know, to turn a program around and, and move it forward? Well, the toughest thing is this conference is just so tough. I mean, we're in the Big South one minute, and next thing, <laughs> Big South is merged with the OVC. And it's like, okay, now we got some even tougher opponents than we had before. And winning's not easy. I don't care what anybody says. You got a team that goes undefeated. That coach and that staff and those players are doing an outstanding job of keeping the continuity together and making sure everybody's attitude's positive. Everybody's making the sacrifice they need in order for that team to do those things. So it's tough. So I take my hats off to Coach um, with Wilkinson. That's, I'm not pronouncing it right. Okay. Yeah. Coach Wilkinson want to make sure that uh, he he's doing a great job with those guys and turning them around and putting them in a seven three situation. It's tough, and and the toughest thing is managing all the personalities on the team, and then not just the team, but you also got the coach's personality, the trainer's personality, the equipment manager. So trying to get all everybody on the same page and to get everybody aboard in order to get that thing turned, it's a little tough at times. But like I said, the biggest thing I think our guys are doing late right now is just believing in each other. And I'm sure a coach would say the same exact thing about his team. These guys are believing in each other and believe they can get it done. How do you keep that momentum then through next year with the transfer portal and all those changes? If you win, that'll be three wins in a row, and that would be fantastic. How do you keep it rolling? I think that's how you do it. I mean, we can get this W on Saturday. We keep that mindset of, hey, we won the last three. It's something that we can keep going. Let's try to do the best we can to keep our mind doing the off-season workouts, our minds on we finished the last three. How good can we get now? The tough thing is, like you said, I don't know who's going to transfer portal. I don't know who's going to come up to me and say, hey, coach, I'm going to change. You know, I'm not getting the opportunity I want to hear. I'm going to go somewhere else. So that's something you got to wait to find out. So (laughs) it's one of those scary things is who are we going to lose? Are we going to lose some key guys? Or is no one going to leave? And are we going to bring some guys in? There's some parts that we need also. Are we going to bring the bring those parts in or all our guys are going to stay? So you run into both scenarios. Of it. Um, what have you noticed about EIU that concerns you for Saturday's game? The quarterback. <laughs> He's an outstanding quarterback who makes unbelievable decisions. Uh, obviously, they put the game into his hands. He does a good job of distributing the ball. 
uh, the receivers he has, the core receivers he has, number seven, number four, uh, and the running back, number 23, number 20. Both those guys are outstanding players, but he's the key to that thing more than anything. He sets things up. He does a great job of surveying the field. It's tough because, you know, being the quarterback that he is, he can throw a guy open when you're in man coverage, and he can pick you apart when you're in zone. So we're trying to find a game plan <laughs> that works for this guy because he's done an outstanding job, and he's the biggest reason they've turned this thing around because he's got comfortable in doing it. And, Coach, you know, Coach Joe Davis, the uh, offensive coordinator, he coached the U Albany after I left. You know, so those guys had nothing but praise to say about him as a as a coordinator and the things that he's able to get guys to do. So it's one of those things where it's the quarterback is the big reason. But I'll tell you this, their defensive line is unbelievable. You know, this is one of the better defensive lines that we've seen all year long, especially in this conference. These guys are big. They can move. And they do a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage. And they're great tacklers. I mean, you guys don't miss a whole lot of tackles in that secondary. But those linebackers are very stout players. So they're doing a good job playing fundamentally sound football on both sides of the ball. And I think that's the biggest thing for their turnaround. And they rank at the top of the NCAA leaders in turnover margin. And now we've talked about turnovers this year and doing the right things. You can talk about like that ass. You all Absolutely. have to take care of the ball. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, we like we said, we turned over six times against Tennessee Tech. We turned over six times against him. We might have just, you know, kiss the baby because they, <laughs> they're going to finish the game on us pretty good. So we definitely got to hold on to the ball. And not just that. The penalties, you know, has a lot of penalties last week also, not the week before that against Semo, which is uh, indicative of how we won the football game by not getting a lot of penalties. So we definitely got to minimize our turnovers, you know, this week and make sure we can get a couple. If we can get a couple or even keep it even, that's a great job for us. Well, Coach, we appreciate you joining us today all season long and wish you the best of luck uh, this weekend in the matchup against CIU. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it. Let's go, Bobby Moe.